Alright guys, we got some big news from Periscope Games, the developers of Postscriptum, and as a Postscriptum creative partner, I was fortunate enough to get an early read on the announcement that came out today, and so I'm prepared now to provide you with some initial thoughts on the announcement of the third map for the Chapter 2 Plongeon update that predates the Day of Days update that we're currently enjoying in Postscriptum. As you know, the Chapter 2 maps included Ston and Dinant as we explored the Battle for France in 1940 with the German army facing off against the French defenders in the early onset of the war in Europe. So without further ado, allow me to introduce you to the third and final Chapter 2 map, that is Maginot. Maginot, as you can imagine, is a reference to the Maginot Line, and the Maginot Line was the French defenses that were aligned along the eastern portion of the French border, where it shared that border with Germany, where the French were anticipating that attack, that penetration may come from the German army. Of course, as the battle for France kicked off, the German army generally attempted to avoid any sort of conflict along the Maginot Line because of its staunch defenses. The Maginot Line, of course, was heavily fortified with a trench system that ran nearly the entire length of the entire system that had within it laced bunkers and obstacles and pre-planned artillery positions and machine gun nests and infantry battle positions and reinforcements and quick reaction forces in all of the hallmarks that we would expect of a modern maneuver maneuver warfare engagement area. So, of course, the Germans did attempt to avoid the majority of the line. However, there was a portion of the line specifically in the northeastern sector described as the fortified sector of the Vosges. And in this particular region, which is right at the steps of the Vosges Mountains in northeastern France, the German army did indeed face the French army in those fortified positions along the Maginot Line. In fact, fighting began there early on in 1940 and then persisted until the capitulation of the French military. And then the U.S. 7th Army later occupied those same positions in 1944 and 45 as the Western Front began to narrow and the choke on Germany began to tighten. In Periscope's developer update on the Maginot map, we get a few other little details that give us an idea of what to expect in this final Chapter 2 location. First, the map itself is roughly 4 kilometers square. That is the same size as the other maps in the region. We also know that this area was chosen because it offers what is described as some truly unique fighting conditions that, quote, we feel mix all the good things about our other maps. Some of the images that I'm sharing on screen now and that I've been sharing throughout the video are exclusive to Postscriptum Creative Partners, and I've had the opportunity to look over them and kind of look for some nuggets that identify things that are a little bit different, a little bit new, and a little bit better than maps we've seen before. What we all know is that Periscope continues to evolve with each evolution of map that they release. Chapter 2 maps introduced lush terrain with highly rendered vegetation and trees, it also added some battle damage to structures and even furniture in the buildings for the very first time. The Chapter 3 maps, of course, kept all of those great things and added the first major urban map in Carantan that brought with it some of its own challenges in the way of optimization. With so many valuable lessons learned, I'm excited to see exactly how well Maginot has been done. As I look through these images, a few things stand out. First, we see a lot of contrast. Some of these images show vast open fields with complex obstacles that are going to prevent armor and infantry from being able to move safely. And then in the very next image, we see these lush forests with their own buildings. That same battle damage that we got to enjoy in other Chapter 2 maps as well as the other Chapter 3 maps. And we get this stark difference in terrain with lush valleys with high ground on either side, thick vegetation that offers lots of concealment and of course those unique bunkers that we see only along the Maginot line with those tricky domes on top and we can then kind of imagine that there may be some sort of subterranean element to this map. One of the images even shows train tracks running right along the outcropping of a fortified position looking over a steep valley with a wall directly to its front. It kind of begs the question as to whether or not we might actually see some sort of added train be it static or or otherwise to the map, which would be a new and unique asymmetry that we haven't yet seen in Postscriptum or any other OWI game for that matter. All things aside, there's a few things that are certain. I think there were some doubts whenever we learned that members of the Postscriptum team were departing Periscope, and the fact that the Maginot map is still coming out bodes well for the future of the game. 
and we can also look at OWI as its publisher as a whole and see a bright spot for all tactical shooters and for the future of Postscriptum. Beyond the Wire is going into early release this very week, and Squad just launched into version 1, and we also have Postscriptum of course now releasing a new map for chapter 2. This is major progress for a fledgling publisher that is beginning to thrive, and it bodes well for the future of all of our favorite games. There's no doubt that OWI makes the very best tactical shooters in the world and some of my most favorite games of all time. I'm very excited to be a part of what's happening right now in the world of tactical shooters and specifically with Offworld. I'm Controlled Pairs. I play the most immersive PC games in the world. This is Postscriptum, and I'll see you in the next one.